This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It has been a very revengey week in the NFL, and how could it not be with the Nathaniel Hackett win over the Denver Broncos yesterday? But we get to finish things off on Monday night with another massive revenge game. Devontae Adams taking on his former team in the Green Bay Packers, at least we think, because Adams is questionable for this game. So not in an entirely certain situation we get to see Adams versus the Packers, but... Pretty interesting game regardless. We're going to break things down from a betting perspective for today to get you ready for Monday Night Football between the Packers and the Raiders. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research here today to break down Monday Night Football between the Packers and the Raiders. Ryan Williams is out for this week. He is out in Vegas, I think actually going to this game, so... Uh, have fun, Ryan, if you are going to tonight's game. If you're going to tonight's game, say hi to Ryan. If you see him in the crowd as well out in Las Vegas, he'll be back with us next week. Now, in tomorrow's show with no Ryan, we're going to dig into the NHL opening night with Tom Vecchio getting his read on some bets he likes for the opening night of games in the NHL. Uh, and that should be a lot of fun. Also taking a look at week number six in the NFL, breaking down where my numbers are show value for next week to get all that as it is posted make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts you can also find us on the FanDuel youtube page and FanDuel tv plus to get FanDuel tv plus go to fanduel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account or go to FanDuel tv plus and download it on amazon fire apple tv or roku devices Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's dig in now to the traditional markets here for this Monday night game between the Packers and the Raiders. Right now, the Raiders are one and a half point favorite. Total in this game is 45 and a half. And I have the one and a half as being about right based on what my model has for this game. The Raiders' money line is minus 134. Now, if you remember Tuesday's show in our first look, I mentioned I like the Raiders' money line of plus 110. So I took that there. And a couple bad omens uh, with regards to that Raiders' money line. The first one is I've had a pretty bad week five in the NFL. So that doesn't bode well for it. And also, this is the second time I've had the Raiders' money line in a game where they were uh, in a primetime spot. They were slight underdogs to open, and they closed as pretty big favorites. Other one was the Pittsburgh game, and obviously they lost that game. So bad omens abound, but obviously those do not impact. Those are superstitions, stupid things. So I think I feel good about the movement. Uh, unfortunately, there is no longer value there. I the Raiders at 54.7% to win. Their implied odds are 54.6%. So value has gone. Uh, if it was actually value before, who can say at this point? But I would not take the Raiders money line now unless it were to get back to around minus 110 or so. 
I think that'd be enough value for me to dive in. But with it being at minus 134 right now, I can't see myself taking uh, adding anything onto the Raiders. And if you didn't have the Raiders before, probably would not add them right now. The total here is 45 and a half. Uh, the under is minus 115. And I mentioned the under because I do show value here. My model has this total at 43.2. So I do like the under. Under is uh, minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook. It's a situation where it's a couple of teams that aren't all that fast from a pace perspective. So they're not going to jack things up from that perspective. Packers are not as slow, I don't believe, as they were last year, where they were like draining the clock down to uh, two seconds left every single play. So it's not quite that dire anymore from a pace perspective, but neither of these teams really rip it up from that perspective. The defenses are pretty bad. Uh, I'm not super into either of them, but the offenses also don't necessarily light things up. So I think honestly here, the under does make a lot of sense. If you were looking at the traditional markets and wanted a bet to add right now, I would say the under is the way to go. Again, about two points of value there for me. Uh, 43.2 for me, 45 and a half is the actual mark, a minus 115 on the under. There's enough there where I would be okay taking the under uh, for the Packers and the Raiders. Before we get into player props, a couple of key injuries to outline here for this game. The first one is Devontae Adams, as mentioned. He's questionable for this game with a shoulder injury. He left the week five or week four game with that shoulder injury. He came back and said uh, that he had to, you know, mentally prepare himself. He's phrased it very, uh, very differently, but he he got himself ready to come uh, back in the game. He did return to that game and he's Devontae Adams. Probably does not lead, need a lot of practice to play but didn't practice on Thursday or Friday, limited Saturday. I think he'll play uh, because he came back in that game last week and it's Devonte Adams. Um, but at least keep in mind that he's questionable. I'm going to, when I'm looking at other props, I'm going to go in under the assumption that Adams is playing for this game. Injury on the Packers side is Aaron Jones. Uh, he did play back in week number four, and that was on a limited, a short week because it was a Thursday game. Uh, he was able to go in that one now has had a full 10 days to get healthy, but no full practices for Jones yet. Limited, 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 and questionable for this game. We see Jones dinged up uh, pretty often, and he tends to play through it. So I'd expect him to be out there, played all 17 games last year. I'd expect him to play in this game because he was able to play last time around. Christian Watson, uh, healthier now than he was before. No full practices, but not limit or but not questionable on the injury report. So that's a, that's a bonus for him. I would say, again, similar to Adams, I'm going to assume that Jones is playing because we've seen him practice or play without practicing a whole lot before, and we did see him play last week. Whereas with Adams, is returning, so I think he'll play. But those are two key injury questions for this week. And the bummer is that because two very important cogs are questionable, we don't have a whole lot of props posted as of right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook because those guys move things quite a bit. With the Adams injury, I kind of thought that I might be interested in Josh Jacobs because Jacobs is a guy who last week when Adams missed some time, got a lot of work, uh, 11 targets in that game. So I thought I, I would want to go to FanDuel Sportsbook and pull up Josh Jacobs rushing plus receiving prop because he can get a lot of work in the passing game. And when you have Adams out there, even though Jacobs may not get as many targets, the offense is more efficient, which means he can get you more yardage. The problem here is that Josh Jacobs, his rushing prop is very, very high. So even when his rushing plus receiving number is up, I don't think I'm going to be able to get there because it's just a little bit above where I'd want it to be. Josh Jacobs right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, 75 and a half is his rushing yardage number for tonight. And that makes sense because they're at home, they're facing a bad rush defense, and the Packers or the Raiders are now favored in this game. But Jacobs has had a pretty rough go of it so far from a rushing perspective. He's had a lot of volume, but not a lot of output. His rushing totals so far this year have been 58, 62, negative 2, and 48. So hasn't come within 13 yards of this number as of yet. That does not mean he cannot get there because, again, it is a good matchup. Uh, Garoppolo didn't play in all those games. He should play for tonight. That's an upgrade for this team. So I'm not saying necessarily that like the under is like a, a place I'm rushing to go. But 75 and a half is a big number. And I am intrigued 
by that number for sure on Josh Jacobs. If Adams does get cleared, we get a Josh Jacobs rushing plus receiving number. That could also be enticing for an under there. So I thought I'd be on Jacobs overs personally, uh, but seeing the actual numbers, I think the under 75 and a half, pretty interesting for Josh Jacobs. The other under I like is also related to health uh, because, again, expecting Christian Watson to play, expecting Aaron Jones to play, and that means the Packers are going to have a lot of mouths to feed because we saw Romeo Dobbs play well last week. Jaden Reed played well uh, when Watson was out. So they've got a lot of guys in the mix here. So I think there's value in Luke Musgrave under 33 and a half receiving yards because they're healthy. And um, Musgrave did go over this number in two out of three games, the two out of three full games he has played so far this year. So he's gone over that number twice in three full games. He's full to go uh, for this week, did clear concussion protocol, so no concerns there. But you've now got Watson, Jones, Dobbs, Reed in, in, a, in a system where – Jordan Love, despite playing decently well this year, is not the most accurate quarterback. Like his completion percentage over expectation is very, very low. His overall completion percentage is pretty low too. So maybe not the most accurate passes. Maybe not the highest target share when you've got so many good players available to the skill core. That's a bit concerning. So Musgrave might have been in a good spot last week where, you know, he had the you were getting Watson back and stuff like that. I know people were on him last week. I think this is a good spot to go under for Luke Musgrave as a result of all the healthy bodies that they've got. If you listen to the baseball portion of this podcast over the summer, you know, I don't tend to tie things together via same game parlays just because not my style prefer to go with individual legs. Um, I think that if you wanted to tie these together, you could because they do go pretty well together. A Luke Musgrave under 33 and a half uh, receiving yards paired with a Josh Jacobs under 75 and a half rushing yards. That fits well if the Packers get ahead or if it's a mo more neutral script where we don't see the Raiders draining the clock later on. So they do match pretty well together, even though I think the Raiders win this game. Those two fit with a neutral script or a positive script for the Packers. And then you can go over to the under and take under 45 and a half unders on yardage correlate pretty well to unders on total points as well. If you were to pair those three together, uh, the same game parlay mark over a FanDuel Sportsbook is plus 461. Again, proceed with caution. I don't tend to do this personally, but it is at your it is an option you do have to pair those together because they blend well enough together where I think it doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's Musgrave under 33 and a half receiving yards. Jacobs under 75 and a half rushing yards and the under 45 and a half for the game plus 461 at FanDuel Sportsbook. It's at least a consideration if you want a same game parlay, if you got some kind of boost in play for tonight and need to or a no sweat bet, something like that. If you need, you know, a same game parlay, I think that's the one I would go with uh, for myself personally. Now, because I like the under in this game, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of points, I'd be pretty conservative when it comes to um, touchdown bets because I'm not expecting a lot of touchdowns here, and I don't want to ruin my under bet uh, if I do well in the touchdown department. But I do think that Jaden Reed is super interesting. Reed right now at FanDuel Sportsbook is plus 360, and there are a couple reasons why I'm intrigued by this despite the fact that we've got a lot of guys who are healthy now for this Packers team. The first one is that Reed did still play a lot last week with Watson back. Obviously Watson was on a pitch count. So wasn't a full go wasn't playing every snap, but Reed still had five targets for 48 yards. He's already seen seven red zone targets this year with five targets inside the 10. So it does seem a lot like they like using him in close to the goal line. And we see this a lot. Like it's, I call it the Isaiah McKenzie role where you got these fast guys back when Isaiah McKenzie was a role player with the bills, his snap rate would spike inside the red zone. Cause he's this, this fast shifty guy in an area where there's not a lot of space to operate. And they leaned into that. So I kind of look for that. A lot of times look for the, the, the shifty guys to get increased work inside the red zone. And Jaden Reed has been that guy so far. I like Reed's talent a lot too. So even with Watson, uh, Dobbs being healthy and Aaron Jones as well. I don't think he'll get totally squeezed out of the mix among the, like I would say relevant guys on both sides. Reed has the longest touchdown odds. Austin Hooper is plus three thirty. like Hunter Renfro is plus three ten. Reed probably should not be longer than those guys. So Jaden Reed plus three sixty. 
That's my favorite touchdown bet for tonight. And again, probably keeping it to just that, uh, given that I don't see a ton of points in this game. A lot of healthy bodies. So Jaden Reed plus 360, my favorite touchdown bet for Monday night. Again, cross my fingers that things go better with the Raiders this time around. They did last time uh, because it's always good to get CLV. You can feel good about that, but CLV does not pay the bills. So we'll see if we can actually translate that into some legitimate cash this time around. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned tomorrow, NHL opening night preview with Tom Vecchio. I'll get my first look into week number six in the NFL as well. To get that as it is posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And also check us out on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. Follow at FanDuel Research. Have a fantastic Monday. Enjoy if you got the day off for today and enjoy the Monday Night Football. We'll talk to you once again Tuesday. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 